Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of Cooking with Ty. Hope everybody's had a great week. So this week I'm doing this a day early so that I can go to work tomorrow and bring in some of the food that I make for my coworkers. Um, some of them seemed interested in trying my cooking. So I'm actually going to do this on Thursday so I can show up on Friday to work with food. So this week we're making Mexican baked bow tie pasta. So what we're going to need, right about a pound of ground beef. I got 1.21 pounds, so it's not really going to make that much of a difference. 90% uh, lean, a little bit of cilantro, two cans of condensed milk. You're going to need two cups of, actually four cups of cheese. I have another two cups in the fridge. Oregano, cumin, diced tomatoes. Uh, you can use petite or regular. It just calls for one can. One can of Mexican style corn, chili powder. I got half a pound of jalapenos. You can use more or less uh, depending on your taste. Two cups of diced onion. So I'm gonna mix up some yellow and red onion. Some garlic, bow tie pasta or farfalla as uh, some may know it. Salt, pepper, and it's all gonna go into a 13 by nine dish. So I'm gonna go ahead and preheat my oven up to 350. Let that get going. I got a pot on the stove to boil the pasta and the rest is gonna get cooked in the frying pan. I'm gonna go ahead and dice up the onions. And while the pasta still got a couple more minutes to cook, we're going to go ahead and mince up all our garlic. We'll go ahead and mince the garlic up nice and fine. And as I say every week, it doesn't have to be microscopic. Just you know, do as best as you can. Just get it good and tiny. So our pasta is done. We're going to go ahead and drain that. We don't need to save any of the water or anything. We just don't want to overcook it. So let that drain right now and then we'll get back to the prep for the rest of it. All right, so now we need to de-seed and de-vein our jalapenos. The easiest way to do that is just cut them in half and take a spoon. And you can pull everything right out of them. Cut the end off with the stem, slice it in half. And just get everything out. Similar similar to like if you're making poppers or something. So what I'm doing now is just dicing up the jalapenos. I found that the easiest way to do that is cut them long ways like this. And then just start at one end and work your way down to the tip. And you take it just slice the tip. Just the tip. So after handling these peppers, always make sure that you wash your hands. You're going to get all the pepper oil on your hands and then if you touch your face or even worse, go to the bathroom, you're going to feel it. 
So we started by cooking our onions and our garlic up in some olive oil. And you're just going to want to do this until the onions become soft. Should take only a couple of minutes. We'll start adding in all the other ingredients. Alright, so I've gone ahead and added in the jalapenos and the tomatoes. And I'm just mix mixing them all together with uh, the onions and the garlic. Make sure everybody's making friends in the pan. So next we're going to add our spices. So I pre-mixed this, make it a little bit easier to add. It's two tablespoons of chili powder, a tablespoon of cumin, a teaspoon, two teaspoons of salt, a teaspoon of pepper, and a teaspoon of oregano. So we'll just go ahead and spread that over everybody here. And give it a good mix. It smells like tacos. Next step is to add in our ground beef. And we're going to continue cooking until the ground beef is all brown. So just keep mixing it around with everything else. So I've got the ground beef pretty browned up here. Next step is going to be to take two cans of condensed milk. Mix that in with it. a good mix and we're gonna let this simmer for about 10 minutes all right so we've had this simmer for about 10 minutes we're gonna go ahead and mix in a can of Mexican corn we're also gonna remove it from the heat so I've gone on going gone ahead and shut the heat off and just stir that in give it a good mix Out of space in the pan here. Let's we'll go ahead and make sure that the corn's pretty evenly distributed throughout there. And then next, hopefully, I have room in the pan left for this. <laughs> we mix in the pasta. So I decided, due to lack of space in the pans, um, I split the mixture in half, half into each pan, and then split the pasta in half, half into each pan, which actually works out because when we put it into the baking dish, we're going to want to put about half of it in and then coat it with cheese and then add the other half and then coat that with cheese. So we'll just go ahead and make sure that the pasta is very well mixed in with the rest of the mix here. And we'll get it into the baking dish. So now we're going to take our baking dish. We're going to add half of our pasta slash seasoning mixture. I wouldn't really call it a sauce. I don't know what you really refer to it as. Filling? Extras? I don't know. We're going to add half of that. Two cups of shredded cheese. So I'm using Cheddar Jack. I've seen some people use Mexican Blend. Um, I've also seen some people use Monterey Jack on one layer and then Cheddar on the next layer. Kind of splits things up a bit. But we're just going to try to give them a nice even coating. Once you've got the first layer of cheese down, you'll take the next layer of filling mix, put that on top, 
hate to have to dirty another pan, but it actually worked out kind of conveniently. I'll spread that around fairly evenly. And then another two cups of cheese on top of that. And then it's into the oven for a half hour at 350. So once this goes in the oven, we play the waiting game. So we got our pasta in the oven. It's 30 minutes at 350. So we'll check on this in a half hour. All right, time is up. Ooh, look at that. Oh, that smells amazing. Get me a nice corner piece here. There we go. You know what I didn't think to get was some sour cream or something like that. I bet you that would have been great. So I've gone ahead and added some cilantro just for a little bit of garnish. Let's go ahead and give it a try. Mmm. Now that is tasty. So all in all, a very good recipe. It does taste very Mexican is really the only way to describe it. Um, you know, it's not too spicy or anything like that. Um... It was very easy to make, just the, the prep was a little more involved. There's a lot of slicing and dicing involved ahead of time. Um, but it came out very well. So if you guys try making this, I really hope you enjoy. Cheers.